Hello guys, Gikuyu Tales, right here, and long time ago, in the golden age of kingdoms and empires, there ruled in the southern lands of Africa a woman of unmatched wisdom and beauty, Queen Makeda, the Queen of Sheba. Her realm, known for its rich spices, gold, and incense, extended from the Red Sea to the depths of Abyssinia, what we now know as Ethiopia. The people revered her not only for her grace, but for her wisdom, inherited from the gods themselves, or so the tales were told. Far to the north, in the heart of Israel, reigned King Solomon, the wise king of Jerusalem, son of King David. Word of Solomon's wisdom spread far and wide, reaching even the ears of Makeda. She heard that Solomon's knowledge was beyond human measure, that he commanded the respect of kings and queens, and that even the great beings of heaven and earth bowed before his wisdom. Intrigued by these stories, Queen Sheba decided to visit Solomon and see for herself the grandeur of his kingdom and the depth of his wisdom. Her journey would be no ordinary one. It would be a journey of enlightenment, adventure, and an encounter with destiny that would change the course of history. Makeda set forth with a grand caravan, an entourage of a thousand camels, bearing gifts of gold, spices, frankincense, and myrrh. Alongside her were her most trusted advisors, warriors, and priests, all equally eager to witness the legendary king. As they crossed deserts and rivers, their path was illuminated by the stars, a celestial guide that seemed to beckon Makeda toward her fate. Upon reaching Jerusalem, the streets buzzed with excitement. The sight of the majestic Queen of Sheba and her caravan entering the city was one of awe. She was welcomed with great honor, and soon after, she stood in the court of King Solomon. When Makeda gazed upon Solomon, she saw not just a king, but a man who carried the weight of millennia of wisdom. He, too, was taken aback by the queen's radiance and the treasures she bore. But more than her beauty or the gold she brought, Solomon was captivated by her mind. In the palace, the two rulers engaged in conversations that would span many days. Solomon shared the mysteries of the heavens, the secrets of the earth, and the ways of men. Makita tested him with riddles, questions that only the wisest could answer. Yet Solomon answered each with precision and insight. Each riddle he solved deepened her admiration for him, and she felt a connection that transcended the earthly. However, on the eve of her departure, Solomon asked her for a gift, but it was not gold or jewels he desired. He wanted a gift that only Makita could give, herself. At first, the queen resisted, seeing herself as an equal to Solomon. But the bond they shared was undeniable, and under the stars of Jerusalem, Makita gave in to Solomon's request. The two became more than rulers. They became bound by a shared destiny. Queen Sheba returned to her kingdom with more than just the wisdom of Solomon. She carried within her the seed of their union. Nine months later, she gave birth to a son, Menelik, whose name means son of the wise. As the years passed, Menelik grew to be a strong and intelligent prince, embodying the virtues of both his mother and his father. When he reached manhood, Makita knew it was time for him to meet his father. Menelik journeyed to Jerusalem, much like his mother had, and was warmly welcomed by King Solomon. The father recognized the son immediately, and there was great joy in their reunion. Solomon, wishing to honor his son, 
offered him a kingdom of his own. But Menelik had a different desire. He wanted to take back to his mother and her people something far greater, a symbol of the divine covenant between God and his chosen people. In the Temple of Jerusalem, hidden behind sacred veils, rested the Ark of the Covenant, the holy vessel that contained the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments, the staff of Aaron, and a pot of manna from the heavens. It was the most sacred relic of the Israelites, a symbol of their covenant with God. According to the secret counsel of the priests and the divine vision of Solomon, it was revealed that the Ark was no longer safe in Jerusalem. The king's many marriages had introduced foreign gods into the kingdom, and the purity of the temple was threatened. Fearing that the Ark would be defiled, Solomon agreed to Menelik's request. In the dead of night, a group of priests and Levites, loyal to Menelik and chosen by Solomon, secretly removed the Ark from the temple and replaced it with a replica. The true Ark was carried south, guarded by Menelik and his loyal companions, on a journey that would take it to a place of safety, far from the wars and politics of the Holy Land. The Ark of the Covenant, now in the hands of Menelik, was taken through the deserts of Egypt, across the Nile, and deep into the highlands of Ethiopia. But the final resting place of the Ark was not to be in the famous city of Aksum, where many believed it remained. According to the ancient maps and the secret knowledge passed down by the Ajikuyu elders, Menelik and his companions continued their journey farther south to a place of great power and mystery, Mount Kenya. Mount Kenya, known to the ancient peoples as Kirima Gia Thayu Imi, or Mountain of Peace, was believed to be the sacred meeting place between heaven and earth. The Ajikuyu and the Kabiru people, ancestors of the modern-day Gikuyu, had long revered the mountain as a place of divine power. It was said that the mountain itself was alive, a sentinel of God's presence on earth. Upon reaching the southern slopes of the mountain, Menelik and his guardians buried the ark in a secret chamber deep within the fourth dimension of the mountain. The ark was hidden near a sacred spring known as Kigongona Kiamai, where waters flowed from the heart of the earth. This site, later known as the Triple S Shrine, became the holiest of places, and only a select few, the seers of Mount Kenya, were entrusted with its location. Ancient maps, kept in secret by the Kabiru people, revealed an astonishing truth. The mountain known as Kirinyaga, or Mount Kenya, was in fact the true Mount Zion. Over time, the name Zion, meaning the Mount of Signs and Wonders, had been forgotten in this part of the world. But the sacred traditions of the Ajikuyu preserved its original name, Thayu Ini. The seers of Mount Kenya guarded the Ark for generations, keeping it safe from invaders, war, and time itself. They knew that the Ark would only be revealed when the time was right, when the world was once again in need of the divine covenant. The prophecy of King David echoed in their minds, Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. And so, the Ark of the Covenant the sacred relic of Israel remains hidden within the heart of Africa, awaiting the day when it will rise again, not just for one people, but for all of humanity. In the stillness of Mount Kenya, where the clouds meet the peaks and the stars whisper the secrets of the ages, the ark lies in wait, a treasure not just of gold, but of faith, of wisdom, and of the eternal bond between heaven and earth.
To this day, the people of Mount Kenya raise their hands in prayer to the mountain, just as their ancestors did centuries ago. They know the truth, hidden in plain sight, waiting to be uncovered. For in the heart of Africa, where the stories of old still live, the legend of the Ark of the Covenant endures a tale of love, wisdom, adventure, and the unbreakable covenant between God and his people. Thank you guys for always watching Give You Tales. Make sure you are subscribed, like this video, and drop your comments. Cheers.